Well, it's time for us to get beyond two dimensions. Let's get on to three dimensions. If you want to make any big bucks in this field, you have to do the real Earth, and the real Earth is three-dimensional. If you stick with two dimensions, what's going to happen? You're just going to be an academic that all the real people are going to ignore. So we at Stanford Geophysics Department are trying to get more and more 3D every day. And I'm going to give you a very elementary question that I think you will enjoy. So let's get started. In three dimensions, does a line Fourier transform to another line? That's what we just saw in two dimensions. A line transforms to another line. What does happen in three dimensions? Here we have a quick review of the theory, which I think you have already seen. We have here a horizontal plane, a horizontal line in a two-dimensional space. It has an impulse at t equals zero. We bring t into omega, and with that delta function becomes this exponential. Then we bring x to k sub x, and this constant function of x, the line there on physical space, becomes a delta function in Fourier space. So what we ended out with here is a vertical line. It exists only at kx equal to zero. It's a vertical line and it oscillates like crazy. So that's the 2D world. Now, if your 3D problem is to have a look at this column, which I've simply copied from above, have a look at this column. You need to have some y's in it. There's got to be some, obviously, some case of y's in it. Y's and case of y's have to be in there. So repair this to make it 3D. And over here, instead of that stuff up there, you have to finish this. The, the top line says, what are you starting off with? Well, it's a flat layered earth with only one layer. You're in the middle of the ocean. The bottom is flat. So you have a plane at x and y at time t. And you're going to record an impulse of strength five. Some, some constant strength will be recorded at that time, t0. So you can put down some words underneath in this column to describe what it is you're looking at. And when you get to the bottom, we'll be interested to know, did your original line transform to another line or what happened? Our original plane, what's that going to go? Is that plane going to turn into a line? What's going to happen? That is the question. Uh, for final uh, final thoughts here on this uh, topic, um, these are just musings. How many cubes are there in 3D? How many cubes could we consider for display? And another question we could answer is, how many different ways are there to get from the data to the 3D Fourier transform? Okay, well, I, it's not a hard question. I hope you enjoy it. Goodbye.